good morning friends are you able to see me good morning are you able to see me are you able to hear is my sound audible you can write in the comment section then we'll start the class yes okay sound is audible sound is okay hello yes okay great okay chalo so we'll solve some questions of your gate okay so today we will solving some previous year questions pyq means what previous year questions of gate okay and we'll be solving questions of 2019 20 21 22 and 23 okay so this is the first question this is a one more question of gate 2019 okay so you can see it's a uh, rcc beam section and what is asked to find out the nominal cover okay to find out the nominal cover how to find out the nominal cover you see what is the nominal cover i'll give you some idea you might be knowing already okay so this portion i am you know enlarging it you can see that this is the beam then we'll have the shear reinforcement okay then we'll have the shear reinforcement yes and then we will have the main reinforcement like this then we'll have the main reinforcement like this so i can say the longitudinal reinforcement now what is the nominal cover nominal cover is cover to all steel you see all the steel is completing here right so this is the nominal cover this is what nominal cover now what is your uh, effective cover the effective cover is from the center of this longitudinal reinforcement this is known as your good morning this is what this is your this is your what we call the effective cover the effective cover now from the question tell me what is given in the diagram effective cover or nominal cover what is given in the diagram tell me what is given diagram okay what is given in diagram effective cover or nominal cover what is given diagram effective cover or nominal cover it is given what this 50 is given what this nominal or effective anyone <laughs> this is given the effective you can see you can see it is from the center okay this is from the center so this is what this is effective given you see this is the effective given this is the effective given right this is the effective cover given are if nominal cover is given then why they have asked in the question <laughs> yes or no so they are asking if a nominal cover means effective is given now you see can i say from this diagram that you see no this effective cover is this one right can i say this effective cover is actually equal to the nominal cover right plus you see this is the dia of what the stirrup na so i can say plus the dia of stirrup plus you see this is what this is half of the dia of the longitudinal steel so half of the dia of the longitudinal steel or main steel yes so from here can you find out the nominal cover because you see what is the dia of stirrup given it is given 12 phi right so 12 mm right yes and what is the main steel dia the main steel dia is 16 mm right so tell me what is the nominal cover from this what is nominal cover from this please tell me what is the answer to this yes very easy yes so i can say nominal cover will be equal to effective cover which is 50 50 minus the dia of stirrup that is 12 minus half of the dia of the main steel a that is how much 30 mm okay, very straight forward question right very straight forward question one more question therefore very short let us go to the next question this was one more question next question is from steel so we are discussing rcc and steel next question is steel and they have asked uh, a question from plastic analysis okay 
have asked her namaste they have asked a question from plastic analysis okay and what they have asked let us see read the question and we will solve it okay what is given it is given that in the section the figure turns from fully elastic to fully plastic what is the change in depth of the neutral axis okay so section was first fully elastic and then become fully plastic what is the change in the depth of neutral axis we'll solve this so first of all when i am telling fully elastic when i am telling fully elastic when we are seeing a fully elastic section that means what the fully elastic section will have neutral axis passing through what passing through centroid yes for the fully elastic section the neutral axis passes through centroid now can we find out the centroid of this uh, section yes i can easily find out centroid of this section this is given 60 mm you see this is given 60 mm this is given 5 mm this is also given 5 mm and this one is given how much 60 mm this one is given how much this one is given 60 mm okay so what i am going to do can take this as two areas as area number 1 area number 2 the centroid of the area number 1 is here na yes and the centroid of the area number 2 is here na yes so can i say that this y1 this y1 means what the distance of centroid of the area 1 and this is y2 distance of centroid of the area 2 can you tell me what will be y1 y2 can you tell me what will be y1 and y2 tell me what will be y1 y2 tell me chalo you also do some things tell what is y1 y2 tell me what will be y1 what will be y2 tell me chalo very simple centroid means half what will be y1 what will be y2 tell me thank you thank you subo thank you what is y1 what is y2 y1 is 2.5 right y1 is 2.5 right yes y1 is 2.5 you see half of this this is 5 this is 60 is this one na nah? 60 is this one right and this is 5 so half of 5 right so 2.5 and y2 will be c this one will be half 30 and then 5 35 yes b back is right okay so y1 and y2 now see area 1 that area 1 this one this one will be how much 16 into 5 300 and area 2 will be also what 16 into 5 300 right now how we find centroid how we find centroid how we find centroid the centroid is y1 a1 plus y2 a2 by a1 plus a2 this is the way we find out centroid right this is what a1 y1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 so can you give me the y bar value the centroid depth from the top use these values and tell me the centroid depth from the top so give me you have to do calculation okay i also do but you have to do then only you will learn na y2 weightage what is weightage from where you have learned weightage this is simple formula of your centroid y1 a1 plus y2 a2 by a1 plus a2 how much are getting how much are getting 18.75 yes you are getting 18.75 you put the values you will get how much 18.75 and this is from top this is from top that means you see that means your elastic neutral axis is somewhere here this is what this is your elastic neutral axis this is your elastic neutral axis yes elastic neutral axis passes through the centroid okay yes okay next this is what the elastic neutral axis let us go to the plastic neutral axis let us go to the plastic neutral axis now plastic neutral axis what is the feature of plastic neutral axis the plastic neutral axis divides 
divides the total area into two equal parts, right? Divides area into two equal parts, right? That is the feature of your plastic nodal axis, right? Now see carefully. This is 60, this is 5, right? And now this is 5 and this is 60. Can I say this area is same as this area, right? Can I say like this? Yes. So these two areas are same. That means what? This particular line, I can say this particular line divides the total area into two equal parts, right? Yes. Can I say like this? Yes. This junction or this line divides the area into two equal parts. You see above 16 into 5, 300, below 16 into 5, 300, right? So this is, ladies and gentlemen, the plastic nodal axis. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the plastic nodal axis. Yes? Understood? Now, let us go to the question now. So this was 18.75, right? Now, can you say, tell me the answer? What was the question? Question is the depth of neutral axis decreases by decreases by so initially it was elastic so neutral axis was here yes after it became plastic so neutral axis is here now now tell me what is the decrease in the depth of the neutral axis what is the decrease in depth of neutral axis tell me what is the decrease in depth of neutral axis can you tell me very easy. Initially it was 18.75 when the section is fully elastic. Then this is how much? This is 5. Na? This is 5. Na? So when it becomes fully plastic, now it is 5. So decrease is how much? 18.75 minus 5, that is 13.75. So you see, so nicely we can solve this kind of question. The answer is C. The answer is C. This was two more question. And we easily solved it, right? Just by finding, you know what? We are finding the neutral axis. Okay. Next. Now this is a question from this is a question from your uh, uh, welded connections. Okay. And this is eccentric welded connection. You can see that this particular plate is welded like this. This is the side view. This is the side view, and this is the this view, right? So I can say this is something like this. This is the flange, yes, and here the plate is welded like this, yes, the plate is welded like this, and this is the load acting, right, and welding is done on this side, yes, and welding is done on this side, yes, like this welding is done, you see, able to imagine, yes, like this welding is done, now see, this load is eccentric to this weld, right? The load is eccentric to this weld. And what is the eccentricity? The eccentricity E is equal to 100. And load is 350, right? So now, since the eccentricity is 100, there will be bending, right? There will be bending here. Now, what will be the bending moment? The bending moment will be simply P into E. So P is 350. So write down 350 into 100 kilo newton mm very good very nice now when i transfer this load here when i transfer this load here okay when i transfer this load here there will be two things right there will be the force and then there will be the bending moment p into e right two things will be there now due to force there will be shear stress now how what is the shear stress formula simply load by area yes area of the weld now see if you see this weld if you see this weld this weld comprises of two rectangles right yes one rectangle is this you see yes and one rectangle is this you see yes now the depth of the rectangle will be how much 500 mm yes the length of the weld right so this is 500 mm and this thickness will be how much this thickness will be the throat thickness. Now, how to find out throat thickness? 
you find out throat thickness what 0.7 into s s is the size of the fillet to vent okay the size is given how much size is given 10 mm sorry it is given 10 mm so it is 0.7 into 10 giving me how much 7 mm okay so the throat thickness is 7 mm so this is 7 mm and this is 7 mm okay so if combine these two if i combine these two i will get a big rectangle right i will get a big rectangle whose width will be how much whose width will be 14 mm na? yes basically 7 for this 7 for this right and then depth will be 500 depth will be 500 so this is what this is the weld section i am seeing this is the weld section which is rectangular so if i want to find out the shear stress simply what force by area force by area so force is how much 350 so 350 into 10 to the power 3 converting into newton an area will be 500 into 14 so how much are getting shear stress tell me how much are getting shear stress tell me are you getting 50 newton per mm square are you getting 50 newton per mm square please solve along with me please solve along with me then only you will understand don't just see yes you're getting how much q is equal to 50 newton per mm square easy now coming to the bending stress how to find out the bending stress bending stress you can find out m by z right the maximum bending stress is what m by z right yes so what is the bending moment we got this is the bending moment we got now this is in kilo newton mm i can convert into newton mm how 350 into 100 and kilo newton to newton 10 to the power 3 now z z is what section modulus for a rectangular section what is the z bd square by 6 now the z is bd square by 6 now so it is b is how much 14 you can see this is b and this is the d so b d square upon 6 so what is the stress you are getting this bending stress tell me how much bending stress you are getting Sixty, yes, you are getting sixty newton per mm square. Okay, so very easy, very easy. We drew the weld section. The weld section is rectangular, so we transport the load. So due to load, there is shear stress. Yes, load by load by area, and then due to bending, there is bending stress. Bending stress is m by z. Yes, so we found out both. Now what is asked? The resultant stress. The resultant stress is resultant or equivalent stress is root under Fb square plus 3q square given by the code. Yes, resultant stress. So just put the values and give me the answer now. Root under Fb square means what? Root under your 60 square plus 3 into 50 square. So how much are you getting? Tell me. How much value you are getting? Tell me. very simple question very standard question okay in the upcoming exams they can just change the values and give a question like this okay they can just change the values and give a question like this 105.35 105.35 very good okay very good okay nice so the resultant stress was 105.35 let us go to the next question okay now this question was very easy actually this question was very easy what is asked you see it is given the fck is given 25 standard deviation is given 4 okay then there is a table given the table is between what the table is between you see average mean strength average mean average compressive strength means what average means mean compressive strength right average means what mean compressive strength right yes so this is fm this is fm and here there is water cement ratio in percentage given okay so it's a table given and they're asking you find out the water cement ratio in percentage round off to the lower integer okay no problem 
so there's a table between the mean compressive strength and the wa uh, water cement ratio now if, if i find out the mean compressive strength then from the table i can find out the water cement ratio right can you tell me what will be the mean compressive strength tell me from this data can you give me the mean compressive strength tell me what will be the mean compressive strength from this data hello tell me what is the mean compressive strength from this data fck plus 1.65 sigma right so give me the value 25 plus 1.65 into 4 that is equal to 31.6 so from this data i can say that your fck is your fck is 31.6 newton per mm square or mpa okay this is sorry fm fm sorry fm fm is this okay now if fm is this yes that means it is somewhere here now you see it is somewhere here now 31.6 will be between 25 and 35 so i have to now what i have to interpolate i have to what interpolate so if i interpolate between these two values okay the water cement ratio because you see fm is lying between this and this yes so how will interpolate this water cement ratio will be equal to in percentage i can interpolate like this 45 plus 45 plus what is the change here the change here is 5 now 45 to 50 is 5 so 5 divided by the change is happening over 35 to 25 divided by 10 into what into your 35 minus 31.6 how much are getting this value tell me you have to do a linear interpolation will be doing what linear interpolation how much are getting tell me what is the value you are getting this is linear interpolation you have to learn linear interpolation i cannot teach you now linear interpolation okay please learn linear interpolation okay learn linear interpolation okay we are interpolating between 45 and 50. Okay. We are inter see very simple. At 35, you are getting value of how much? 45. Now, yes. And then at 25. I can take the like this also at 25 you are getting value of 50 actually and at 35 you are getting a value of 45 okay learn linear interpolation please why all of you are so weak in mathematics huh? what you did in college <laughs> copied <laughs> okay so now we are trying to find out at 31.6 this value yes so this will be how much this is 45 plus this value this will value will be how much this will be slope into this thing now slope is how much y2 minus y1 now this thing is how much 35 minus 31.6 right now don't tell me that sir i don't know this also <laughs> always i have to teach linear interpolation to students I feel that what students are doing, I really don't know. Why students are not able to do linear interpolation? I think after some years, students will ask, sir, how 5 into 10 is 50? Please teach us multiplication also. Okay. So slope is what? 50 minus 45. Y2 minus Y1 by X2 minus X1. This is how we find out slope, right? Right. So this is, we can say 0.5. So 0.5 into, this is how much? 3.4 1.7 right so this is 45 plus 1.7 46.7 and if you have not understood this please learn linear interpolation okay so getting 46.7 now in gate examination in gate examination they always ask such questions what is written round up to the lower integer so what you will enter as the answer tell me what you will enter in the answer if you are getting 46.7 what 
what you will enter in the answer from the instructions given in the question. From the instructions given in the question, what you will enter in the answer? Tell me. Because it's an NAT question, you have to uh, enter the data, the answer. So what answer you will enter? Please mention in the comment section. Round off to the lower integer. Are you, tell me, we are not there, students are not there, they are in away. <laughs> Obviously. So you enter what? 46, na? Round up to lower integer. Let me see how many students are there. H per that I will teach. <laughs> Let me see how many students are present. 46. Okay. <laughs> Let me do, take, take, take two minutes. Huh? <laughs> Oh, 10 are there. Great. Okay, <laughs> that's increasing. <laughs> okay. okay, so answer is 46. Understood? Let us go to the next question. It's a very simple question asked in 19. Two more question. What is given? The critical bending compressive stress. What is this critical bending compressive stress? This is the Euler's buckling stress. This is the Euler's buckling stress. Critical bending compressive stress. Euler's buckling stress. Okay, it's given how much? It is given 1000 MPa. Okay. Then the yield stress is given 250. It was a very easy question actually. You know, it's a very easy question. They should not have asked it for two marks. But they have asked for, Sir, can you trust bana sakte hai? <laughs> <laughs> what is asked? Non-dimensional slenderness ratio. Non-dimensional slenderness ratio. The non-dimensional slender ratio is what? It is simply Fy by Fcc root over. Very simple. Very simple, right? It is FY by FCC, not FCC by FY, okay? So it is how much? Tell me. It is 250 by, you can solve here, it is how much? It is 250 by 1000, na? So it is what? 1 by 4, that is half, that is how much? 0.5. Understood? Yes, it is FY by FCC not FCC by FY. This non-dimensional slenderness ratio comes less than 1 actually most of the times. Understood everyone? Understood? It normally comes less than 1. So it is 0.5. You might have done ULTA. FCC by FY. Yes? Okay. Next question is, so this was 2 marks, but I, I think it is very easy question. It actually should be asked 1 mark. They asked 2 marks. <laughs> The next question is also a very easy question. Why they ask two marks, I don't know. But it's actually an mark question. What is asked? Find out the effective modulus of elasticity of concrete. Means the elastic modulus of the effective modulus of elasticity. Okay. So this is what? This is 5000 root FCK. But this is the short term elastic modulus. If we consider the long term, it is what? Divided by 1 plus 5. Where phi is what? Phi is your creep coefficient. It is what? Creep coefficient. What is creep coefficient? You should have asked them. I am not going to answer this question. Mr. Ajhar, what is going on? What is going on? Hmm? You are applying for, you want to become engineer. First learn that. What is going on? We are solving previous questions, right? So when I am solving previous questions, uh, should I answer any random interview question? Here, you will start asking this question, that question. I am not here to answer this random questions. The aim of the session is 
to solve previous question with the limited time. So I'll be focused on that. Okay. So if you don't want to solve the previous question, you can leave the class. But I'm not going to answer such random questions in the inter in this. What is asked in the interview? What is asked in this interview? You read random things. I'm not going to ask, answer these things. Okay. Because that will spoil the time. Already you see it spoiled 30 seconds. Okay. I'm not going to spoil 30 seconds more. Okay. So what is this creep coefficient? It is it is what? It is your creep strain by elastic strain. Creep strain means the plastic strain, right? It is the creep strain or plastic strain by elastic strain. Okay? So now you see what is given. It is given that a specimen of RCC was loaded to a stress level of 12.5 and the initial strain was noted as how much? The initial strain was noted as you see 500 micron I can say right? It is 10 to the power minus 6 means what? Micron I can say right? So the initial strain is the elastic strain. No? It is the elastic strain right? Now after that what is written? If the load is allowed to stand for a long time the strain increases to this. It increases to this. Okay, so it is it allowed to stand for a long time. Means what? This is the plastic strain, right? This is the plastic strain which developed due to the load being allowed for a long time. Because creep or plastic strain comes when the load is allowed to stand for a long time. Now see, elastic strain is 500 micron. No doubt about this. This is the elastic strain, right? You see. This is the elastic strain. Now this is the plastic strain. This is the plastic or creep strain. Yes. Now what will be this plastic strain? This is not 1000. This plastic strain is how much? This is also 500 because this is 1000 minus 500, right? That is also 500 micron. Yes. Because when it is written, increases to, it's not increases by, it is increases to. So initially it was 500, then it increased to 1000. So initially 500 was the elastic, then increase 2000, that means the increase is 500, that increases the plastic one. So game over. <laughs> so phi is how much? The phi is actually 1. Phi is actually 1. So we will put here, very easy, 1 plus 1, 2. So 2500 and you see it is given M25 concrete. So root FCK will be 5. So very simple question, 12,500 MPA is the right answer. Very simple, straightforward question. Let us go to the next question. It is another easy question. The designed moment capacity, or I can say this is the moment of resistance asked. Okay, this is a very standard question asked in the examinations. Moment of resistance. You see, I will solve this, then another question is there, you can see that also. See, they asked moment of resistance. Whenever they are asking you moment of resistance, there are standard steps, right? So first thing is to find out what? The XU, the depth of neutral axis. How to find out XU? XU you can find out using the equation C is equal to T, right? What is C? C is 0.36 FCK XU into B. See, this lecture is for students who have already studied and this is for revision purpose. Huh? So if you have not studied, I am not going to teach here now <laughs> the equations, okay? This is for revision purpose, okay? So if you have not studied, you can see other videos where we have taught the things. You can see those videos, okay? Or you can visit the app, download the app. There we are teaching from the basics. But this is a revision lecture, okay? So from here I can find out XU. XU is how much? 0.87 FY is how much? 500 AST. Okay, AST is given 942, yes? 942 divided by 0.36 FCK is 25 and B is given 300, the width of the beam. So tell me, okay, what is the answer X you are getting? Tell me. How much X you are getting? Tell me. Okay, so large value, no, no, you not get that large value.
शराब से बहुत डर लगता है मत पढ़ो <laughs> टीचर से अगर डर नहीं लगता है तो मत पढ़ो जाके और किसी के पास पढ़ो जिनको पास जाके आपको बहुत अच्छा लगता है आपको अच्छा लगने के लिए तो नहीं पढ़ा रहे हम कि आपको अच्छा लगे <laughs> आपको ऐसे फील गुड करा के लिए नहीं पढ़ रहे हैं ये सर नो आई एम नॉट हेयर टू एंटरटेन यू और नॉट हेयर टू मेक यू फील गुड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फील गुड यू कैन गो टू रेस्टोरेंट्स हैव गुड फूड एन्जॉय विथ योर फ्रेंड्स आई एम नॉट योर फ्रेंड ओके हम उसे गेटिंग हंड्रेड फिफ्टी वन पॉइंट सेवन सेवन आ रहा है ओके इट्स हंड्रेड फिफ्टी वन पॉइंट सेवन सेवन ओके एक्स यू आर गेटिंग हंड्रेड फिफ्टी वन नाउ वट वी डू Now what we will do? X U limiting. X U limiting is how much? You see the grade of concrete is given F P five hundred. So it is point four six D, right? So point four six effective depth is given how much? It is given four fifty, na? This is given effective depth, see, right? Four fifty. How much are getting? This is how much are getting? Point four six. Into four fifty, how much are getting? Two hundred seven mm. Yes. So you see, your X U is less than X U limiting. That means it's a under reinforced beam, right? It is an under reinforced beam. So directly M O R, I can find out how. Simply either you can find out C into Z or you can find out T into Z. Any formula you can use, right? Now what is Z? Z is the lever arm. D minus 0.42 X U. So we'll put. Let us find out from T into Z. You can find out T into C into Z also. Let me find out T into Z. So 0.87 F Y is 500. Okay. A S T is how much? 942. Then D is 450 minus 0.42. X U is 100 151.77, right? Now see this answer you will get in newton mm, right? If you want to convert into, if you want to convert into kilo newton meter, you divide by 10 to the power 6. So how much are getting M O R? Tell me. Very simple. So you will get the same answer if you are solving by C into Z, right? Same answer you will get if you solve if you put C and then multiply Z, then also get the same answer. So how much are getting this? Tell me. Why we divide 10 to power 6 to convert into kilo newton meter? Because it is asked in kilo newton meter. This is printing mistake. Kilo newton meter. So how much are getting? 158.3. Some problem I am feeling. Let me check. Huh? Let me check this calculation. 0.87 into 500 into 942 divided by 0.36 FCK. Then B, yeah, one fifty two one point seven six, one fifty one point seven six. That is correct. Into point four two minus four fifty into nine forty two into five hundred point eight seven F Y now into point eight seven. Yeah, you are getting this value one hundred fifty eight point three kilo newton meter. Okay. Understood. Very straightforward question. Now see, this question was asked in 2020. Okay, this question was asked in 2020. You see, in in 23. Over. Yeah, yeah. We will take X U limiting. If it is coming more than that, in place of X U, we will take X U limiting. Correct. By Krant. Good. Okay, if it is coming over in first, in place of X U, we will take X U limiting. Now see this question. It is the exact question. Same question, they just change the values, right? So the questions do get repeated with changing the values. Now the answer to this is 300 kilo newton meter. You can try it yourself. I am not solving this. I am not solving this. You can try yourself. The same question. You see, steel is given. Okay, grade is given. This is given. Everything is given. And they have asked to find out what? They have asked to find out the ultimate moment of resistance. Means what? M O R. They have asked. Okay. So following the same steps, you can find out, right? 
from the same steps. I am not solving that. Okay. Very good. Let us go to this next question. Okay. Same steps. Find x u. x u is less than x u limiting. Put the MR formula. Find out. And if as told, Vikram told, if x u is coming more than x u limiting, then what you will do? In this equation, you put x u is equal to x u limiting. Okay. Now, this is another question of uh, uh, pre-stress concrete. It is given that we have a pre-stressed beam, simply supported beam, okay, in which there is an external load of 12 kilo Newton, okay, 12 kilo Newton, right? And then the tendon profile is linear with zero at ends and maximum at center. This is the tendon profile given. Now, what is asked? What is the value of eccentricity E of the tendon at the mid span? It's very easy. Okay. So, we have to basically balance this load. This is load balancing method. So, in this, if you want to balance the load, the eccentricity is taken as the bending moment divided by what? Divided by the pre stressing force. The bending moment by the pre stressing force. Now, what is the bending moment at center due to a load W at the center? That is WL by 4, na? yes, the bending moment at mid span because we are trying to find out the eccentricity at mid span. So, we will take the bending moment at mid span. That is WL by 4, right? When a point load is acting, we know that. That is what? W is given how much? Concentrated load of 12. So, 12 kilo Newton. Length is how much? Span of 8 meters. Printing mistake, 8 meter. So, 8 meter divided by 4. So, I can say this is how much? This is 24 kilo Newton meter. This bending moment is how much? 24 kilo Newton meter, right? Now, this is 24 kilo Newton meter. And then your P is how much? Your P is given 600 kilo Newton. 600 kilo Newton. So, this question actually should be one more question, but they have given two more question. I don't know why. It's very straightforward question, right? So, this is coming in meter. They have asked in what? Mm. And round up to the nearest integer they have given. And to convert into mm, what I will do? I will multiply into power 3. Now it is mm, meter to, m, meter to mm I converted. So how much are you getting? You are getting exactly 40 mm, right? Getting exactly how much? 40 mm. So very easy question. Directly you can solve m by p. This is from load balancing method of pre-stress. Simply m by p. We know how to find out bending moment. Just divide by the pre-stressing force. So then the next question. This is actually one more question and actually one more question only. So, this is from the split tensile test, okay, from split tensile test, actually it is building metal also I can say, but common to building metal and concrete structures. So, we have a load P acting 157 kilo Newton like this and what is the split tensile strength? The split tensile strength is given by 2P by pi DL, the surface area of this particular cylinder, right. So, 2P. Now, this is asked in Newton per mm square. So, I will convert everything into Newton and mm. So, 2P. P is given 157 kilo Newton. I will convert into Newton divided by pi. Pi is 3.14. Na? Yes. D is given how much? D is given your 150 mm and length is given 300. It's a cylinder. Therefore, pi DL, right? Surface area. So, you can see that you can easily solve this actually. If you multiply this, this becomes 314, right? If you multiply 100, right? So it becomes 314. So see, you can easily solve this with an order calculator also. So how much are getting this? You're getting 1000 by 450, right? So I can say this is uh, 20 by 9, that is equal to 2.22. So they have given what? Round up to one decimal place. So answer is what? 2.2. 2.2 Newton per mm square. This is the split tensile strength. Always see what they have mentioned. Always see that what they have mentioned. Rounding up to what? You see rounding up to nearest integer. Here round up to the two decimal places. So two decimal places means I could have done 29 or 28. Doesn't matter. Okay. They will give a range. Okay. Nice. Even 3 zero is also correct. Right. See if you write this as 3 zero, that is also correct actually. <laughs> yes. Now yeah. So, this is a very, again, this is why they have asked two more questions, I don't know. Many of the questions in RCC and still, uh, I feel that there should be one more question, why they are asking two more questions, I don't know. 
see what is given the limiting depth of neutral axis okay find out the limiting this is a t beam now the axial limiting doesn't depend on anything <laughs> the axial limiting doesn't depend on anything it only depends on grade of steel and the effective depth that's it it is k into d only it doesn't depend on the area of steel doesn't depend on grade of concrete also it doesn't depend on anything it only depends on this k by the by the way formula of k is what 700 by 1100 plus 0.87 fy now this k is how much it is 0.53 for 250 it is 0.48 for this and 0.46 this is for 250 still this is for 0.415 this is for 500 but what is given here 550 so if they are gi giving you some other grade of steel then you can use this formula because these values of k they come from this equation only right so what is the value of k you are getting 700 by 1100 plus 0.87 into fy 550 how much value of k you are getting tell me how much value of k you are getting Point four four three. Okay, I'm getting point four four three. And effective depth is given. What is effective depth from the top to the steel? It is given five hundred, right? So into five hundred. Very straightforward question. Very straightforward question. Other data is given just to waste time. <laughs> Other data is given just to waste time. So what is your actual limiting you are getting? How much you will get? Round up to the nearest integer they have given. So 0.443 into 500 if I do, I am getting 221.5. So I can take it as 222. Right? Let me see the exact value. 700 divided by 500. Let me find out the exact value. Exact I mean 221.7 something. So I can take this as 222 mm as the answer. Okay. Now see such kind of questions you should be very thorough about the concepts. You see. Whenever I see such questions I know why such data is given. Waste of time. All this thing is waste of time. Okay. All this area of steel. Nothing this is not required. Sometimes they will always give you additional data to confuse. If you don't know the concept. Okay. The actual limiting doesn't depend on anything. It doesn't depend on the area of steel. It doesn't depend on grade of concrete. It only depends on the grade of steel. Okay. And it depends on the effective depth. Even doesn't depend rectangular or T beam or L beam. Doesn't matter. Same thing we'll get. Okay. Very nice. So it is actually one more question. Last two more question. Okay. Just one minute. I'll just switch off this AC. It's become very cold now. Okay, that's what I told now nah, here. It's only depending on FY. Same thing which I told you are repeating that. <laughs> Next thing, it's a very typical question asked in the examination. Many times it has been asked. What is asked? There are two steel plates, one, two steel plates are joined. You have to find out the design capacity of this welded connection. So this design capacity is nothing but the strength of weld or I can say the load required, the failure load is nothing but what? This is the failure load. This is the failure load in kilonewton, okay? This is the failure load in kilonewton. Now failure load is what? Failure load is what? Stress into area. Stress into area will give me the load. Now what is the stress we will take? The stress we take is Fu by root 3 gamma mw. Fu is the ultimate stress and gamma mw is the factor of safety in welding. This is the stress. Area how much I will take? The length of weld into the throat thickness of the weld. Now length of weld is how much here? If you see the length of weld is you see which is welded like this. So length of weld is how much? It is 
200 plus 200 plus 120. That is how much? 520, right? Very good then. And throat thickness will be how much? You see, it is given 6 mm thick weld. Whenever they write this 6 mm thick weld, that thickness is not throat thickness. That thickness is always size, remember. Huh? If they write throat thickness, it is throat thickness. If they write thickness, that is size. So from here I can say the throat thickness will be 0.7 into S, that is how much? 4.2 mm. And you see, the ultimate strength of weld is given 410, that is your FU. Yes? And it is done in a workshop. When it's done in a workshop, the gamma MW is 1.25. In field, it is 1.5. So if I now want, find, want, want to find out the strength, I can just put the values now. Yes, these values will be how much? 410 divided by root 3. Gamma MW is 1.25. Okay. Into 520 into 4.2. You will see this answer you will get in Newton. They have asked in what? Kilo Newton. So I divide by 10 to the power 3. Then round it to 3 decimal places. So 410 divided by root 3. Further divide 1.25, then into 520 into 4.2, and further divide by 10 to the power 3. I'm getting how much? 413.586. I can take it how much? 413.586 kilonewton. Now see, this was asked in 2020. Now similar question is asked here. You see, similar question is asked here. 2000. Uh, 23. See in that question what was asked? The length was given, the strength was asked. Right? Here the strength is given, the length is asked. You see what is asked? This is just reverse. So you see they are asking you the length of weld. So see, it is welded like this. This plate is welded like this. It is welded like this. Here it is welded, here it is welded. So they are asking you what, what is this length. So if you can, this length will be the total length of the weld divided by 2. Na? Yes or no? The so total length of the weld divided by 2, right? Because we are welding on this both. Now I can find out total length of weld. How? It is given that this weld has to take a load of how much? 275. If this is the load, then the strength should be at least equal to the load, right? So indirectly they are giving what the strength. So what happens? This equation, same equation, the strength of weld is 275 kilo newton will convert to newton. This will be what? Fu by root 3 gamma mw lw into throat thickness. You see? Same equation, you see? Same equation. In 2020 they asked what? They asked the they gave the length, they asked the strength. Here they gave the strength, they asked the length, right? And FU is given 410, the ultimate stress, don't take the yield stress. So this is 410 divided by, root 3 gamma MW is given how much? 1.25, okay. LW we have to find out. And throat thickness is how much? It is given size 10, so throat thickness is 7 mm, right? 0.7 into this. So see from here you can find out what? The length of weld, how much you are getting length of weld tell me? From here, how much length of weld you are getting, tell me. From here, how much length of weld you are getting. One thing, this answer gives me Newton, therefore I convert this also into Newton. So that Newton, Newton matches, right. Be careful about the units. How much you are getting, tell me. Length of weld. Two seventy five into two thousand into root three into one point two five divided by four hundred ten divided by seven. I'm getting two hundred seven point four five. I'm getting how much? Two hundred seven point four five I am getting. But they have not asked this one. They have not asked this one. What is written? What is the minimum requ length requirement for each weld? There are two welds here, right? Now total we got. So this will be how much? Half of this. Half of this is how much? 
103.72 mm. But what they have written? They have written round up to the nearest higher multiple of 5. Right? Nearest higher multiple. So nearest higher multiple of 5 is 105. Right? Easy. You see that means this question and this question of 120 are actually same. Right? They are actually same. Right? Same equation. Right? Another question you see this is a pre-stress concrete and this asks to find out what? It is asked to find out the stress at Q point. Okay. I will draw this. This is a cantilever beam and it is pre-stressed and we have to find out the load is given here. This load is given suppose how much it is given? It is given this P is different from that P the pre-stress is not pre-stressing force. Let me name this as W. 5 kN is acting and uh, the eccentricity is given how much length is given 1.5 meter is given 1.5 meter uh, and we are here to find out the stress at point q it is at top right you see q is at top at top okay so q here i have to find out the stress now there is pre stressing also and the section is given like this the section is given like this pre stressing also the section is given like this b is given how much B is given 200 okay D is given 300 and the pre-stressing is done at top and this is the distance DC given it is given how much 50 mm it is given 50 mm okay very nice and the pre-stressing force is given 50 kilo Newton so pre-stressing force is given 50 kilo Newton and it's a straight tendon so can I say that this is the neutral axis, right? Half. So the pre-stressing is done here, na? You see, pre-stressing is done at top, right? Okay. Now can you give me the eccentricity? What will be the eccentricity? Tell me. What will be the eccentricity? Tell me. What will be the eccentricity? Tell me. What will be the eccentricity? Come on. What will be the eccentricity? From the diagram, what will be the eccentricity? 100, very good. You see this total is, total depth is 350, 300. So this half, neutral axis will be at half. This is 150 and this is given 50. So eccentricity is how much? Eccentricity is 100 mm. Very good. Okay. Now see this load is acting here okay how much 50 kN is acting at eccentricity of what eccentricity of 100 so what i will do i'll transfer this load i'll transfer this load to the axis when i transfer this load to the axis so this load will be transferred there will be a moment also na? there will be a moment also right now this load this load was there load was here actually so moment will be how what how the moment will be like this now yes or no there will be a moment p into e now like this yes again you see load was acting so if you want to find out moment about this point this will turn this point like this now this load yes or no if you see the moment due to this load about this point it will be like this right Mm -hmm. Yes, are <laughs> See, now it rotated like this, now. Yes. So this is what the moment is P into E. Now let us see this point Q. At this point Q, there are three things acting. Okay, there are three things acting. There are three things acting. What are three things acting? You see, this force is acting, which will generate what compression, now so due to due to 50 kilo newton there will be stress of how much p by a na? stress of p by a so load is 50 so i'll convert into what stress so convert to newton and then area is how much area is 200 into 150 cross section yes so how much are getting this value
सम प्रॉब्लम नो रूट इज गिवन फिफ्टी ना फिफ्टी ए हाउ मच आर गेटिंग दिस स्ट्रेस पी बाई ए हाउ मच आर गेटिंग फिफ्टी इंटू टेन टू दावर थ्री एरिया इज टू हंड्रेड इंटू थ्री हंड्रेड हाउ मच आर गेटिंग इट विल गेट फाइव विल गेट पॉइंट एट थ्री ना आर यू गेटिंग पॉइंट एट थ्री द स्ट्रेस ड्यू टू दिस फिफ्टी किलो न्यूटन ओके यू आर गेटिंग नॉट गेटिंग आई एम गेटिंग आई विल टेल ओके पॉइंट एट थ्री ओके सो ड्यू टू दिस लोड पी दिस फिफ्टी किलो न्यूटन ओके यू सी इट विल कॉम्प्रेस दिस होल एरिया राइट सो दिस इज कॉम्प्रेशन दिस इज कॉम्प्रेशन नाउ यू सी दिस पी इन टू ई दिस पी इन टू ई इज वॉट दिस पी इन टू ई इज इट इज सैगिंग ना इट इज सैगिंग मोमेंट राइट इट इज सैगिंग मोमेंट सो ड्यू टू पीई ड्यू टू पीई वट विल बी जनरेटेड वट विल बी जनरेटेड एट द टॉप कॉम्प्रेशन राइट Compression will develop, na? Yes or no? See, this is a sagging moment, right? So it's like this. So what will happen? You see, at top there will be compression, na? Yes, at top there is compression. So what is the stress due to that? It is bending. So m by z, m by z. So m is how much? P into e. So P is how much? Fifty into ten to the power three. E is how much? Hundred mm. Z. It's a rectangular section. So B D square by six. So how much moment you are getting? And this will be compression only, na? Because due to this P into E, you are getting compression at the top. Because Q is at top. How much you are getting this stress? Tell me. How much you are getting this stress? Very easy, very easy. First, due to axial load, I am getting compression. Then, due to bending moment, due to PE, you are getting 0.27. Others also, please tell. 1.67. Let me solve. 50 into 10 to the power 3 into E. 6 divided by B D square. 1.67 we are getting. 1.67. Yes, and this is what? This is also compression. This is what? Compression, right? This is compression, right? Because due to this bending, you can see that there is compression at the top. Now see, due to this load W, there is also bending, right? Due to load W, there is also bending. But this bending is like this, na? You see, this bending is like this. That means what? It is your hogging, right? Yes, hogging. So due to this W, the moment will be how much? W into length. Yes. So this is how much? Five into one point five kilo newton meter. Now due to this, what will happen at the top? There will be tension, na? You can see this tension, na? Yes, tension. Stress equation will be what? Same m by z only because this is a moment. Same m by z only. Yes, where m is this much, but this is a tension. Here there will be tension. So I can write down five into one point five will convert into what? Newton mm divided by what? Divided by your b d square by six. So how much are getting this? I'm getting 2.5, right? I'm getting 2.5, but this is what? This is tension, right? Everybody understood these three things. Everybody understood these three things. You see, in this beam, first due to the tendon force, there is compression, 0.83, right? Yes. Then the tendon is at a certain eccentricity. So when we transport the moment, there was a moment P into E. Now this was sagging, right? So due to that, I found out the stress at the top, which will be compression, 
m by z i got this value then there is a load acting like this so due to this load w suppose here it is given p let me write down w so the moment will be what w into l w into l this moment was p into v but this is w into l but it is hogging therefore in top tension will develop what is the question the resultant stress can i say the resultant stress is zero <laughs> can i say the resultant stress is zero you see 1.67 compression 0.83 compression if you add it is how much 2.5 compression so total is 2.5 compression and 2.5 tension the answer is a big zero so it's not always zero in this question it was it is coming zero okay it's not always zero that always it will come zero in this question it is zero and this is the way we solve questions actually this is tell me if you see this is pre-stressed concrete or this is uh, strength of material you see if you see this is pre-stressed concrete or strength of material it is actually strength of material right if you see this is actually strength of material so if you are not studying strength of material then be assured that in pre-stress you will not be able to solve the questions and also in steel structures you will face difficulty now this is another question on steel structure let us solve uh, this question okay this is all this question okay so they are asking you the resultant force on this r okay and force to this r okay now how to solve this question you see in this question what you can do you see this is the load i'll transfer this load at the center when i transfer this load at the center what will happen this 16 kN will come into picture and there will be a torsional moment also right this torsional moment will also come into picture moment will also come and what will be the value of this moment if this, this is p this is e this torsional moment will be p into e right the torsional moment will be p into e right there are two things there is the torsional moment you can draw like this one second what happened the torsional moment i'll draw big one right this is p into e rotating the whole thing about this center right very good two things are there now two things are there now first what will happen this p force will get distributed among all the bolts there are six bolts so there are six bolts like this there are six bolts like this so for each bolt the force will be how much due to the force p it will be 60 by 6 yes so in each bolt there will be what 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 this is what the p is distributed among all the six bolts now due to the twisting what will happen there will be another force coming into picture which will be perpendicular to the radial direction you see like this for this bolt for this bolt like this 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 and for this bolt like this yes but the thing is that the thing is that they have asked only for r bolt means this bolt this bolt right only for this bolt yes so there are two forces and you can see both the forces are in same direction so i can find out these two forces add them that is the resultant force right yes so there are two forces one force is due to the force p that is 10 na? that we got 10 right that we got as 10 there is another force due to, due to the torsion yes this is due to the torsion how to find out this due to torsion due to this torsion how to find out the force due to torsion the force due to torsion what is the formula the force due to torsion is equal to tr by summation of r square T R by summation of R square. Now what is T here? P into E. P is how much? 60. Eccentricity is 100. So P into E. What is the R? R is the radial distance of that bolt from the center. So what is the radial distance of that bolt from the center? You can see it is 40 mm given, right? So for this bolt it is 40 mm. So write down 40 mm. Okay. Now what is written? Denominator summation of R square. How to find out the summation of R square? Summation of R square. Summation of R square is equal to, you see, the R for all the bolts. You see, this is 40, this is 40. Yes. Now you see how, for this bolt, if you see, this is 40 and this is 30, na? so this will be how much? 50. 
this is 50 this is 50 this is 50 and this is 50 yes so for 4 volts it is 50 so 4 into 50 square right and for 2 volts it is 40 so 2 into 40 square if you find out this you will get how much 13200 0, 0, right because 50 square is 252500 2, 0, 0 into 4 is 10000 and 40 square is 600 600 into 2 3200 so 10000 plus 200 13200 so divide by this yes yes you get some value 2400 0, 0 divided by 132 let me do some calculation 66 it is 20 then 10 33 11 20 200 by 11 200 by 11 is how much you will get how much 200 by 11 18 point something right you get 18 point 18 right 200 by 11 you will get 18.18 yes so see this is due to p we getting 10 due to the moment we are getting 18.18 so total is how much total is 28.18 total is 28.18 kN right but what they have written resultant force in bolt round up to one decimal place so i can write down 28.2 kN is the resultant force on bolt r yes resultant force on bolt r you see very simple you can solve this question within two three minutes also next question now this is question on plastic moment capacity you see the beam is given okay and they have asked what to find out the plastic the plastic moment capacity it's very easy you see now in this case collapse load is what you do a static method or kinetic method to get the same answer actually so these are standard formulas now if you want to learn this i have taken one video entire video which is available you can search uh, plastic analysis collapse load I have taught for all the cases so you see this case is what you see this case is a B so here the collapse load formula is MPL by a B this is the formula okay that's a standard formulas I have already taught if you want to see you can see it is available on the YouTube okay so you see here a is given how much L by 3 right and B is given 2 L by 3 so just put this values, right so W is equal to MP L L by 3 2 L by 3 so you can see it is what 9 by 2 MP by L but what is asked MP is asked so collapse load is this so from here I can say MP is equal to what 2 by 9 W into L yes and 2 by 9 W into L this is the answer right this is the answer and we get here same actually you do by kinematic method or static method this is the formula yes so nicely you can solve this kind of questions if you know the standard formula you can find out in seconds actually next question okay this is question for your CR reinforcement very standard question two mark in CR reinforcement what are the steps first step is to find out the nominal shear stress how to find nominal shear stress it is the factored shear force by BD. Now, what is the factored shear force given? 440. So, convert into Newton because I want a Newton per mm square. B is how much? 300 and effective depth is given 580. So, I can find out this nominal shear stress 440 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 300 divided by 580. I am getting a value of 2.5. Five to nine, I am getting okay. Two point five to nine, I am getting as the nominal shear stress. Second step is to find out what tau c. Tau c. Tau c is already given. How the design shear strength for beam is given 0. 0.6. This is tau c, right? This is tau c. 0. 0.66 already given. Now you can take this as 2.53 more uh, easy. So this is that's it. Tau v we got. Tau c we got. Directly you can put the formula now, right? that your SB the spacing should be less than equal to 0.87 FY area of the stirrups then tau B minus tau C into B very easy formula so 0.87 FY is given how much 415 you see 
what equals to 4 into 15 and they have given what 2 legged 10 mm so 2 legged so 2 and area for 1 leg is pi by 4 into d square right further divided by tau b 2.53 minus tau c 0 0.66 and b is given how much b is given 300 very standard formula so how much are you getting this sb is getting from 0.87 into 415 into 2 into pi divided by 4 into 100 divided by 300 divided by 1.87 I am getting a value of 101.1 right getting a value of 101.1 mm right now what is the question round up to the nearest integer so the answer will be 101 this is ladies and gentlemen the spacing very simple question straightforward very simple question straightforward easy next question this is in to find out the average loss of pre-stress in a post tensant concrete member when the tendons are tensant one after another this is one after another means what one after another means one is done, then first is done, second is done, third is done. The standard formula for this, for post tensioned member, the standard formula for this, what is the formula? The loss due to elastic shortening, the total loss is, the total loss is n into n minus 1 by 2, m into fc. This is the formula, n into n minus 1 by 2, m into fc. Okay, where n is the number of tendons. Here number of tendons is how much? 3 given. So 3. But this is the total loss. This is what? The total loss. Yes. This will be how much? 3 into 2 by 2 m into fc. That is how much you are getting? 3 into mfc you are getting. The total loss you are getting 3 into mfc. What is asked? Average loss. Average loss means what? Per tendon. So average loss will be how much? average loss will be actually average loss will be how much if you see total loss divided by number of tendons right so actually it is n minus 1 by 2 into mfc now n minus 1 is what 2 so 2 by 2 is what 1 so m, m into fc so average loss is i can say or you can find out like this see this is total loss is 3 into mfc so average loss will be 3 mfc by 3 that is equal to what mfc yes but see for all for, for always will not get mfc here we got because n was 3. If n was, uh, n was 4, then you would have got what? 4 into 3 by 2 total divided by, so you would have got 1.5, right? 1.5 into MFC, right? So it always will not get MFC. In this case, we are getting because it is 3 tendon. A very easy question, right? M into FC. M is the modular ratio. FC is what? FC is P by A plus. P e square by i. Very straightforward question actually. Very straightforward question I solve in the classes. So P is how much? We have to find out P. Pre-stressing force. How will find out pre-stressing force? It is 1500 into 200. Yes, this is the pre-stressing force. Right? Stress into area. And this is we are finding for one tendon. Huh? Fc always we find out for one tendon in case of these losses. So the P will be how much? Can I say P will be equal to? 1500 into 200 divided into per 3. 300 kN, right? 300 kN. We are finding for 1 1. It is in each cross section. Okay? So this I can say is 300 kN. I will convert into Newton divided by th area. Area is how much? Cross section is 450 into 450. Plus P e square. This is P. I will write down here otherwise it will get vanished behind my back this is 300 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 450 into 450 plus this is 300 10 to the power 3 e is given how much eccentricity is given how much see it is written that the pre-stressing is done 125 mm from the bottom and total depth is how much 450 so this is 125 from bottom so what is the eccentricity total is 450 so this will be 250 na, 225 na. 
so is the eccentricity coming 100 understood you see total depth is 450 right total depth is 450 so this is 225 and they have given what 125 from the bottom so this is the eccentricity eccentricity is 100 eccentricity is always from the neutral axis so 100 so 100 square 100 square divided by i i is what pd cube by 12 so how much are getting this tell me how much are getting this fc tell me I will getting 2.36 FC will be getting 2.36 FC you will get 2.36 again I will do P is given 300 kN 300 divided by 450 450 area P by A plus P E square E is what 100 100 square divided by 450 into 450 cube bd cube by 12 right p e square p this is e square and this is what i okay so we'll get 2.36 as the fc the average loss is what m into fc so m is given what mole ratio is given 6 so we'll multiply just 6 so 2.36 into 6 we are getting the accurate value of 14.16a is the right answer. Yes. And you can see that you can easily solve this question was actually two lines. This question was actually two lines. Actually one line. This is the answer na. <laughs> if you see this is the answer na. Yes. This is the answer. One line question. This one line question. Yes. In gate questions are not lengthy. You need the right concept only. You need the right concept otherwise it will end the okay now this is this question is from what this is from shape factor okay this is from shape factor how many questions are remaining one two three four five six okay okay this we have already solved let us go reverse <laughs> let us go reverse this is 2023 question we solved this also i told you can solve mor by following the same steps now this question is in easy actually what is asked m20 concrete refers to concrete with a design mix having so m20 means what this is the fck na? this is the fck and what is fck fck is such that five percent samples are less than it right fck is such that five percent samples are less than it so it is what five percentile cube strength yes it is 5 percentile cube strength yes this 20 is what this is the fck see first and second are wrong because it is written average 20 is not the average 20 is not fm na? 20 is not fm 20 is fck so it is not the average yes so fck is not the average F average is fm so fck is what 5 percentile means what 5 percent less than this yes but it is cube strength right we conduct the test on cube right we conduct the test on cubes so it is 5 percentile cube strength of 20 mpa okay very straightforward question one more question now this is another very straightforward question what is given singly reinforced beam is given the maximum compressive strain yes if you see a concrete beam like this the strain varies linearly right and this is the steel here so here the maximum compressive strain is 0 0.0035 so either this is correct or this is correct so this is in the concrete now the strain in the bars at bars this is how much this is 0.87 fy by es plus 0 0.002 because it is a deformed bar fe415 yes 
So if you put this value 0 0.87 FY is 415 divided by ES is what? E value is 2 into power 5 for steel. Now plus 0 0.002 you will get a value of what? You will get a value of 0 0.0038. This will get us what? 0 0.0038. Yes. The answer is what? The answer is A here. Understood? Are you getting 0 0.0038? Yeah, okay, very straightforward again, but two more question. I am amazed. <laughs> I was seeing recent questions. Some questions actually don't deserve to be two marks. They're very straightforward question, which I directly teach in the class, but they're asked very straightforward. <laughs> now, this is another two mark question, but actually it is very straightforward. I teach in the class, okay, that in case of doubly reinforced beam, in case of doubly reinforced beam, if you are seeing the stress in the compression steel, okay, you see here we have compression steel, we have tensile steel. So here this is 0.87 Fy always. At failure, this is stress in the tensile steel, okay. This is always tensile steel is always 0.87 Fy. But in the compression steel, but in the compression steel, the stress is Fsc, right? And it can be 0.87 Fy, it cannot be 0.87 Fy. So for mild bars, for this Fe 250, it is actually equal to 0.87 Fy. And for deformed bars like 500, 415 or 550, this is actually less than 0.87 Fy. When you are talking about what? Your FS. Now question is, the stress in the compression steel can reach the design strength 0.87 Fy where? Only in case of plane bars. I directly teach in the class. I don't know why they're asking two more questions for this. <laughs> Easy things. Okay. Now this is the safe factor which they have asked. Okay. Safe factor for this. Okay. Two more questions. You can easily solve this actually. Now what is safe factor? It is ZP by ZE. The elastic section modulus. Sorry. Plastic section modulus by elastic section modulus. Now if I want to find out the plastic section modulus, what I will do? I will see the axis which divides this into two equal parts. This is the axis which divides into two equal parts. Now what you can do is, you can take this part as a rectangle, you take this part as a rectangle. Okay. Now how you find out ZP, first of all this is the plastic total axis. Now why? Because you are dividing into two parts. Now how to find out ZP very easy, you take the area of the rectangles into what? The distance of the centroid of the rectangle from the plastinotal axis and take a summation. That is very easy now. If you see this first rectangle, this first rectangle, what is the area? The first rectangle area will be how much? Tell me. I am finding ZP. The area of the first rectangle is how much? Can I say it is B by 2 into 3B? Na? Yes, it is B by 2 into 3B. You see this is 3B. Yes, this is the area, yes, first rectangle, B by 2 into 3B. Now, what is the distance of its centroid from the neutral axis? It is how much? B by 4, na? it is B by 4. So, B by 4, B by 4, right? This is for the first one, this is for the first one. Now for the second one, if you see, for the second one, you see the second one. What is the area of the second one? The area of the second one will be simply B square, na? Simply B square, na? B square. And what is the distance of its centroid? What is the distance of this centroid from this plastinotal axis? Can I say it is, this is B by 2 and this is also B by 2. So total is B, na? Total is how much? B. Yes? So, this is for area number 1, area number 2. Now if you see area number 3, this rectangle, if you see, this rectangle is same as area number 1, na? so we will get the same value. So I will multiply a 2 here. Now you see this area number 4, it is area number 4, it is same as area number 2, na? so I will multiply 2 here. 
this is the value of ZP. So how much ZP you are getting? Tell me. ZP you are getting how much? If you find out this, you'll get in terms of B cube actually. You'll find in terms of B cube actually. So let me do some calculations. This will cut 3 by 4, 0 0.75, 2.75 now. We are getting 2.75 B cube, right? You see, 2.75 B cube, very easy. Okay, this is the way we find out ZP. Take different rectangles, take their area, and take the distance of the centroid of those rectangles from the plastic neutral axis. Yes, you are getting 2.75 piece. Let us go to JD. How to find out JD? JD is very simple. JD is the I divided by JD is what? JD is the I divided by Y max. Now see the centroid of the whole area will be here somewhere, right? Yes, here somewhere. So see this is the elastic total axis also. Here elastic and plastic are same. So this is the Y max, right? This is the Y max. And by the way, Y max is how much? It is 3B by 2. This is your Y max. This is your Y max. So this is 3B by 2. I can say 1.5. B right 1.5 B. Now how to find out I for this? How to find out I? Very easy. You see these three rectangles you see. These three rectangle number one, this one and this one. These three rectangles for all of them the neutral axis is same. No? Yes. For all of them the neutral axis is same. So what I can do? I can simply add their I. So I can say for the first one I is what? BD cube by 12. So I can say BD cube. So BD cube means what? BD cube means what? BD cube is this. Yes. BD cube is what? BD cube is this. So BD cube by 12. BD cube by 12. Plus. Plus what? For, see, for the first one and third one it is same. Na? So I can multiply 2. And for the center one, the, okay, for the center one, the width is B, depth is 3B. Na? So B into 3B cube by 12. Yes. Game over. So B B gets cancelled. I get some B cube. How much B cube I'll get? See the first one is. See the first one is 2 by 12. If you take common actually, you will get B cube. Then you will get actually 18. 12 into 1.5. And that you'll get 9 cube is uh, 3 cube is 27 plus 2. 29, you are getting 29 by 18, right? Or I can say 29 divided by 18, you are getting how much? 1.611 B cube, right? Yes, 1.611 B cube. Yes, you will get 1.611 B cube. So what is the safe factor for this? B cube, B cube get cancelled. 2.75 divided by 1.611. I am getting a value of almost 1.71 or a close to 1.7. Yes, 2.42. No, no, no. You will not get 2.42. You will get 1.611. You see clearly. See, this is 2. Okay. Cancel this B. Yes. Then what I can do? You see, take B cube by 12 common. If you take B cube by 12 common, this is 2. And this is 3 cube is what? 27, right? And then divide by 1.5. So 1.5 into 12 will give me what? 18. So it is 29 by 18. You will get 1.61. Right? So the surface factor is 1.7. Very easy. Straightforward question. Okay? So like this you are going to find out. Always they are not going to give you standard shapes. See if they give you standard shapes. Nah, you see. Standard shapes means rectangle. For rectangle it is very easy. 1.5. For circle. For circle is 16 by 3, 5, very easy, right? So for diamond, like this, it is 2, right? For a square along its diagonal, it is 2, yes? So if they are asking you such things, then it becomes very straightforward, right? Then it becomes very straightforward. But for T sections and sections like this, you should know how to find out. Otherwise, you will not be able to solve, okay? Now see this question, last question. Here you see they have asked the shape factor and the plastic moment. See, shape factor is 2 for this. Shape factor is 2 for this. So either the answer is this or this. 
Now, how to find out the plastic movement capacity? That's very easy. You see, plastic movement is what will take the areas, will take the areas and take what area into what I told. What is Z? MP. MP is FY into ZP. Now, what was ZP? I told. I told ZP is simply take area and the centroid distance of that area from the neutral axis and take a summation. Now see this first triangle. Okay. This is the y bar for this triangle. No? Yes or no? Okay. Now what is the area of this triangle? This area of this triangle will be half of this square. This is actually a square placed with diagonal horizontal. So half of this will be how much? You see this is a square. The area will be a square and half of this will be what? a square by 2. So I can say this area is a square by 2. Now see this total will be diagonal. Na? If this is a, this is a. This total will be root 2a. Now what will be the height of this? This will be root 2a divided by 2. That is what? a by root 2. Now what will be y bar? y bar will be height a by root 2 divided by 3. Yes or no? Yes. Again I will tell. We have to take this triangle only. Okay, so we are taking this triangle A A yes. So total area is A square for this whole thing. So this this area will be A square by two. Now this is how much? This is A by root two. How? Take total root two A divided by two. Now centroid will be here at H by three height by three. So this is A by three root two. A by three root. Very nice. Now this is for only the area above the neutral axis. Now see there are two areas, right? You see, if you are seeing areas about the neutral axis, this is one area, this is another area, right? Two areas are there. They are same. So for this we got this. For this what I will do? I will just multiply two. So getting how much? You are getting how much? A cube by, this get cancelled, 3 root 2. I can put this value here. MP will be equal to FY. FY is how much? 250 it is given. 250 A cube. Yes, A is given 100. So A cube by 3 root 2. Now this I will get in Newton. Newton mm. So I will convert into kilonewton mm divided by 2 per 6. Which is just cancelled, right? So I am getting 250 by 3. 250 divided by 3 divided by root 2. I am getting a value of 58.92. So answer is A. Yes. Say factor is 2 for this and MP are getting this. So you should know how to find MP. And if you want to find out MP, you should know how to find out ZP. If you cannot find out ZP, you cannot find set factor, you cannot find out MP. Okay. That's it. So these are the previous questions for... Uh, the gate in the last five years some questions which are having similar concepts i have not solved them okay because they are similar concepts same thing they have asked again and again so hope uh, you like the session okay uh, but obviously this uh, this is not everything this is hardly the questions asked here is hardly 10 percent or 5 percent of the syllabus so if you are solving only this question doesn't mean that you will get uh, success so i'll request that you download the baijus exam prep app there you can see more videos. Thank you.